Okay, I initially recorded something like 11 minutes worth of commentary for this game, but then I realized that most people already have a negative opinion on this game based on the crazy controversy surrounding it, and no one is going to watch another long-winded diatribe on all the game's faults. So I figure I'll make this video telling you my opinion as short as I can. The story is very Mega Man, and the characters are all XPs of those from Mega Man 1, except Ram who's just your typical corrupt corporate executive type. After the game's inevitable twist, the story sort of detours, and a plot thread isn't really resolved, but the mighty numbers have various personality traits that are better presented in the Japanese dub, which is superior in every way to the English one. <laughs> Big name talent on that side. The gameplay is either decent but flawed or outright garbage, depending on how you feel about the dash mechanic. Many were expecting a straight up Mega Man clone, but that is not what's presented here. Instead of the shots from your blaster destroying enemies, they merely weaken them, allowing you to dash through them to absorb their cells. The percentage you absorb depends on how quickly you manage to dash into the enemy. A bonus to this is that you also pick up a buffing effect depending on the color emanating from the weakened enemy. Red ups the power of your shot, green increases your speed, and yellow increases the energy stock of reflection power, which is the energy for the weapons you get after beating other mighty numbers. These power-ups allow you to get through levels faster, which is ultimately the point. Similarly to Azure Striker Gunvolt, the overall focus of the game appears to be speedrunning, and you're graded on a number of factors, including time, damage taken, enemies killed, and combos chained from dashing through foes. I'm an average player, so my ceiling for now seems to be A rank, though I'm sure if I used powers more effectively, that could be improved. The problem with all of this is that the game doesn't really encourage the use of powers in any obvious fashion. And unless you read the tips section and the options menu, it's kind of hard to figure out the full usage of them. The levels themselves were also designed in a way that made me sometimes scratch my head. Countershade's level was interesting in that it was a simple round building, but also annoying for the same reason. Aviator stage was irritating due to the constant strong winds throwing off my jumps to the point that I began to use the dash mechanic to get through those parts. For some reason, the water and cryosphere stage is initially brown, hiding enemies in the walls. And this right here? This was obviously such a dumb design choice that the devs felt a need to actually display a tip, which could have easily been fixed by simply making the energy smaller or something. All of these issues get in the way of the learning process, but those who take the time to learn the stages and enemy placement will breeze through them. It doesn't change the fact that they're not that great. Overall, the presentation is also mediocre, especially considering that Comcept used the Unreal Engine 3 as its base. Compared to this proof of concept, the final product is missing all lighting effects with the exception of Bloom. The polygon count is pretty low also, making the game look like a high-resolution Dreamcast game. But I would say that that actually works in the game's favor, given the fact that all the character and machine designs are reminiscent of the classic era. Still, this? It's not this. Also, I could forgive everything else if they gave enough of a crap to animate the mouths of the characters. There's a slew of extras, including a challenge mode for solo and co-op play, and online modes, but the second player has to play as Call, who is not as adept in combat, with not much else to make up for it. Aside from a feeling of superiority regarding her lack of feelings, whatever. Guys, Mighty Number no. 9 is nowhere near mighty, but it's a serviceable game that should be tried later when the price drops. Many people will be put off by the deviation from standard action platformer game design and questionable level design, even if they're down for speedrunning. I personally like the game, despite its problems, but I can like a game with flaws and still be critical of it. Oh, and take yourself some auditory pain and switch to the retro soundtrack. It's way better than the normal one. System down sequence を開始します。お疲れ様でした。